So today I've been asked to give a testimony about my marriage to Janie. But whenever I do this, I want it to also to be meaningful to you. You see this t-shirt that I'm wearing? Janet had this made uh, three years ago. Uh, and she did not know that we were going to totally end up together. But this looks like I'm in the picture. We, you can. She did their best or good to put me in the picture where we're both in the picture together. And one of the things that really meant a lot to her is whenever we got our picture taken and we were both wearing that shirt. Y'all probably have seen that post. So... I viewed that, of course, as predestination, that God was already preparing the way, the desire and stuff. But as I talk about this issue, I'm going to go back before three uh, three years ago. I'm going to go back, actually, to six years ago. And uh, um, because that's whenever I met Janet in studying the Bible. And we entered into a relationship for five years. So as I do this talk today, I'm going to do a little bit of alliteration by P's. I'm going to be talking about the prayer and the process. That, that we went through, the importance of that. I'm going to talk about the planning aspect. I'm going to talk about the providential provision of God in the midst of this and the promise aspect of things. Now, concerning prayer and process, what I want to say is I don't believe that what has happened so far would not have been possible without the prayer. It's coming from, from us as individuals, us as the church, and worldwide Christians have been praying and I mean worldwide meaning that all over because the layman seminary all the different countries uh, y'all know what we're involved in so that aspect is definitely true that it is worldwide well 18 years ago I was told by a teacher a Bible teacher he said that you will find the woman that God wants for you doing the doing ministry for God and what he meant by that is that she would be actively involved in ministry um, Dr. Rene Lopez of Dallas Theological Seminary, when he saw that we were married, he, he, he was like, I can't, uh, can't think of two other people that, 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 that are more suitable or more fitted because of y'all's, both y'all's passion for ministry is basically what he was saying. So anyway, um, maybe that teacher from back then saw that in me and said that. I'm not saying he was a prophet or anything like that. But what's also interesting is, is, on Janet's side of things, many years ago, probably around, I don't know, um, before we met, so over six years ago, she had a Bible teacher, and this Bible teacher told this group of women that she's involved with in this study, she said, y'all are real passionate about the Word of God and all this, so let me ask y'all a question. Why are y'all wanting to, to minister like this? And, uh, um... Janet's response was she raised her hand because they were asking about, you know, do any of them want to be married? And Janet's a answer for why she wanted to marry was this, that she's supposed to share the word, but according to what she sees in the Bible, that there's no such thing as a woman pastor or a pastora. And so because of that, she needed to marry a pastor. Now, we're not going to get into the logic about all that and everything, but the point is, is that she felt a call, a desire to marry someone because she had ministry in mind. Her favorite expression has been, I want a partner in life and in ministry. And so when I proposed to her, those were the words that I mirrored back to her. So anyway, we felt this, uh, we were sharing these experiences and studying together and we got to know each other and all that. And by 2004, around Valentine's Day, we felt, that calling uh, to be something more than just friends involved in ministry. And uh, so the process that all this occurred in is is you have the agape love, that uh, this process that Pastor Mark always teaches about, where we were both Christians in ministry. And then we started uh, getting involved in phileo love, that liking love, that friendship love, because we saw that we had shared interests concerning ministry and passion of the Bible, but we also had shared pain. And it was this shared pain about us talking about our past and the things that we've been through that I really started feeling that connection. Now, I'm, it was there before, but it just became very intense during this time. Then you have the store gate type love, uh, the familial type love. Now, we don't have physical children, uh, but we have spiritual children. In fact, one of the women that, uh, we, re that we saw that we have ministered over several years, she said, that, that Janet and I had many different nieces and nephews. I think that's the term she used. Um, 
to describe all the people that were in the room and the people that they had touched. And some of y'all saw that in our premarital wedding. And then we have the Eros love. You know, that's that idea where you recognize there's a fire in the relationship, but the fire's got to be in the proper place. It's got to be in the fireplace. And so through marriage, I uh, made it official that she's now my partner in life and in ministry. So the planning aspect of that. Well, honestly, Dr. Williams' talk last week uh, helped me a whole lot because he explained how th there's times every time he planned, it didn't work out. Well, I've, I've planned, I've researched, I've done a lot of different things, but I really felt that around uh, starting in 2016, there was just door after, mainly 2017, there was just door after door after door just seemed to be shut in. Um, and uh, I didn't know exactly what was going on. And, uh, but it was really interesting how the door started opening up again. I guess it wasn't the right time. Or whatever but whenever the door started opening up it was right after pastor Mark had shared an illustration it was one of those illustrations that, that I've heard a million times or it seems like uh, in various contexts and it was about the girl who wanted to emancipate herself and and, and, and from her parents and 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 pastor Mark told her well you you know what you got to do right yeah she said I got to do this this and this and he's like well can you do any of these things and they're like, no. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? The reason why this was so significant is because up until that uh, recently, I did not know uh, all the legal things I could do. I mean, everything was my own personal research, but I didn't have confidence. I couldn't trust the sites that talk about all this stuff because when you go into talking about passports and, and visas and all of that, you find out that a lot of the sites that you hit on are actually promoted by passport agencies or lawyer firms that want your money. Well, a couple years back, I met this paralegal um, through teaching Greek. And, and so I was telling her about all this and, and she was able to look at some of the sites that I found and, and she felt like, okay, this is an acceptable one. And so I called up this law firm and uh, um, I told them the situation and they said, the first thing you got to do is you got to go to Hong Kong and you got to meet her in person, you know, or she come here. Well, I knew that she was not able to go here this time. So I was like, okay, so now I know that. And, and, and not only that, I, I was given several different steps to do after that. I mean, the step-by-step -step process, prices, costs, all of that stuff was, was told to me. And that had never been told before. So I knew, just like that girl who wanted to be emancipated, that I needed to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, well, I can't even do the first step to get to Hong Kong. So when I heard Pastor Mark preaching about that emancipation illustration, I was like, God, I, for the first time, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do, but I don't have the ability to do the first step. So I submit, Lord. I, I guess it's not your will, not your timing, or, or whatever. Um, and so I'm telling y'all, uh, very soon after that, the door started opening up. Basically, uh, um, I told Janet, I was like, I would have to come up with a thousand dollars, uh, in order to be able to go and, and that door opened and, uh, I started operating and then there was all these hoops, all these deadlines that we had to get involved with. And I can tell you about this in detail. And, uh, um, and Jennifer can help too, cause she, she done a lot of the paperwork for me. Um, but I was going off of that principle, uh, in the old Testament about the jars of oil, the jars of oil that continuously ministered to the house and it continued to be filled up and never ran out, uh, until the, the set purpose. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep working through these steps, working through these processes. And you know what, if I get to Hong Kong or, or I don't. You know, that's okay. We get closure because that's the other thing we wanted. We wanted closure. We wanted to find out exactly what God was willing to do. Another thing that was going on during this time is I was reflecting on the sermon that I gave to the church about passing over the family. And I'm like, what was the challenge of this sermon for me to deliver it about my past? Or what is the challenge there? And then I just felt that strong. I start, Things started connecting and I was like, okay. 
I can't pass over the family. This is a call to my marriage. I need to take this grand gesture of love and do whatever it takes to be with her, which means I may not be able to, to, to go, you know. But anyway, I took the risk. And uh, so before this happened, our pastors met each other. And basically, the pastor of Watermark wanted to know, can we support this ministry? Now, I did not know exactly what that meant, you know, I mean, until I got there and just was blown away by what God did. But whenever we did get there, uh, the, the talk that Pastor Mark had with them, because that pastor knows Janet and Pastor Mark knows me, that helped prepare us for the premarital counseling. And then it wasn't just normal talking premarital counseling is we took an evaluation, a test, and then we discussed that and that opened up a lot of different things. And, and it was just really amazing. And then the pre-wedding celebration, the, the way God showed up was just totally amazing, which makes me go to the second point, God's providential provision. You see, I helped Janet find that church years ago. What I did was I went online and I looked for, uh, for pastors that graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary. And then I helped her find the pastor. And the people uh, at that church were just so shocked that I had met the founder once over Skype, just for like five minutes when, when he was talking to Janet. Um, but they think that's so cool because they would come up to me, oh, you're from Texas. And so, you know, um, we talked about that. And so what it felt like, especially at that pre-wedding time, was that we have been ministering to those people in that room. Some of them do the Greek videos with us, other Bible study methods with us over several long years. And here they are in this room. Some of them specifically came to church that day to show their gratitude and other people they discipled. And it was just like, well, we're seeing the fruits of our labor in this sense because they were continuing that process of discipleship that we've been seeing about con con uh, passing things on to faithful men and women by extension, as Timothy was talking about. So it was just blown away by God's provision and his timing. And they ministered to us in a way we did not expect. You see, we expected something more like, okay, we're going to go sign a document like it's front of the justice of the peace. And uh, um, for various reasons, we expected that. But man, we were blown away. I mean, just y'all seen the pictures, y'all seen the food, y'all seen all of that, you know, and that was all God's provision. And, uh, um, you know, so they're it just blown away by that. So this, and I could go into more detail about that, but it might just be easier for me to, you know, get a cup of coffee with me and we could talk about this. We had to share this story with so many people at the church and with her friends and all of that. So there's just so much that we can talk about. Plus we've made videos as well. Then we get to the, ask, the, the last P, and that's promise. Well, in order to make this relationship work, we promise to make time for each other. You see, Janet works 12 hours a day, and that means that we have to make time to meet on our lunch break and also at night, um, right before bed. And so this is, a, this is a challenge for us, but it's also a challenge for people in the audience right now. There are some of you that are married and your wife is not overseas. She's right in front of you, but yet you might as well say the distance is between overseas because if you don't communicate, then the intimacy problems exist. And then, you know, when you don't have good communication, then any other problem that goes on in the relationship is, is magnified because uh, as far as the process. The other thing we promise to do is to grow into accountability. Her church is going to hold her accountable and support her. And I know my church, y'all, are going to hold me accountable and, and support me in doing what God wants me to do. And the last promise is that we promise to remain one. And that's a big challenge, you know, because worst case scenario, let's say that we never ever get to be together in the sense of, of, of that y'all as married couples in this room are and, and in this life. It's all right because we we already have a passion for ministry. We have communication. You know, God will give us strength to deal with that because we both feel that call to ministry. And I wish that I could give a video of Janet talking about these things, and I probably will do that later on, but we are only supposed to make this 10 minutes. So 
you might say, well, how in the world are you going to be able to do that? Well, first thing I want to, uh, to first thing I call to mind is that Christ is in a long distance relationship with the church. Yet, and the, I know that he's sinless and there's differences in that, but, but let's just focus on this, that Christ has not come back for his church yet. Yet, we were able to have intimacy and meaningful experiences which give us hope. In the same way, we're confident in each other that is just as Christ is preparing a place, we're confident that we're both being prepared and we're preparing. I have confidence in Janet and her, and, and her desire to do what is right, and she has confidence in me. And you see, all marriages are a challenge. That's okay though, I appreciate the challenge. One of the reasons that I felt a call to marry Janet is because she challenges me in every way possible. So my challenge or the thing I want y'all to take away from all of this is that whenever Pastor Mark's given a sermon or whenever we're hearing someone give the word of God, even if we feel like we've heard it a million times, you never know. That might be the moment that God may use that word to move you to express faith. So in conclusion, please believe in the process of prayer and, and, and let that process of love in the proper order unfold. Plan, but remember his providential provision. And see, be faithful to the promises that you are being given to keep and make in your sphere of influence. God bless.